Hey, what's going on everybody? So I forgot to film an intro at the cemetery. It's one of those things. Sometimes I'm so focused on doing what I'm doing that I just forgot to do the intro. I don't know what happened, but this will be that. And we're going to visit the grave of Dottie West. I hope you enjoy the video. If this is your first time here, hey, welcome. I hope you enjoy the content. Summer in Alabama, right? Bugs and everything. And if this isn't your first time here, hey, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, if you haven't subscribed, please consider liking, subscribing, sharing, you know, doing all those things. And I got the member section, we got the merch, we got all the stuff, right? I got all the things. I try to plug all that stuff in the videos and everything. It helps the channel grow by you guys doing all that stuff. It helps me get to places and do the things that you and I get to do. So it, it really does help. Don't think that it's just like I'm taking it and we're just like blowing money. No, because, you know, gas being $4 a gallon, it's, you know, it takes everything, right? You guys get it. You're living through it too. You understand what's going on. So yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. It was really cool to go visit the grave of Dottie West. I really enjoyed. It's a little small part of Tennessee, way off the beaten path. So yeah, the cemetery is great. I'll, I'll see you guys at the cemetery. Let's get going. So Dorothy Marie Marsh was born on October the 11th, 1932 in a community called Frog Pond, about 64 miles northeast of Nashville. In college, she met her first husband, a steel guitarist named Bill West, with whom she had four children, including, including country music star Shelley West. After graduation, West moved with her family to Cleveland, where she began appearing on the television program Landmark Jamboree as one half of a country pop vocal duo called the K-Dots, alongside partner Kathy D. She moved to Nashville, where her husband and she fell in with aspiring songwriters, including people as Willie Nelson, Roger Miller, Hank Cochran, and Harlan Howard. West often played hostess to these struggling songwriters, offering them a place to stay and eat, and in return, they taught her about the structure of songwriting. During this time, she also became a close friend of Patsy Cline and her husband, Charlie Dick. Beautiful cemetery, isn't it? Let's try to walk a little this way. Cline became one of West's biggest career inspirations. The greatest advice Klein ever gave her was, when you're on stage, sing to the audience with all of your heart and mean it. Then cast a spell over them. If you can't do it with feeling, then don't do it. In their early days in Nashville, West and her family often did not have enough to pay the rent or buy the week's groceries. So Klein would hire her to help with her wardrobe and West's husband Bill to play in her band. Klein even offered to help pay West rent or buy groceries when Bill and she were struggling to stay in Nashville. Patsy was a great lady, wasn't she? West earned her first top 40 hit in 1963 with Let Me Off at the Corner, followed a year later by the top 10 duet with Jim Reeves, Love is No Excuse. Also in 1964, she auditioned for RCA producer Chet Atkins, which, cheesy plug, We've been there and visited his grave, who agreed to produce her composition, Here Comes My Baby. The single made West the first female country artist to win a Grammy. How cool is that, right? Here Comes My Baby reached number 10 on Billboard country charts in 64. After releasing the Here Comes My Baby LP in 65, West and Chet reunited the following year for Suffer Time, which generated her biggest hit yet, would you hold it against me? In 67, the West Atkins pairing issued three more separate albums. During the same period, she also appeared in a pair of films, Second Fiddle, The Steel Guitar, and There's a Steel on the Hill. She continued to have success as a solo artist during the 60s with such songs as What's Come Over My Baby and Country Girl, which garnered her an offer to write a commercial based on Coca-Cola in 1970. The soft drink company liked the results so much it signed her to a lifetime contract. In 73, West provided Coca-Cola with another advertisement featuring a song called Country Sunshine. The popularity of the commercial prompted her to release the song as a single and it became one of her biggest hits, reaching number two 
on the country chart. In 77, she was due to record the song Every Time Two Fools Collide when Kenny Rogers' vocals were added. Released as a duet, the single hit number one. In 1978 and 79, the duo won Country Music Association's Vocal Duo of the Year Award. On August 30th of 1991, West was scheduled to perform at the Grand Ole Opry. Shortly there, after leaving her apartment at Nashville, West Carr, a Chrysler New Yorker, stalled in front of the old Bell Mead Theater on Harding Road. West 81-year-old neighbor George Thaxton spotted her on the side of the road and offered to drive her to the Opry for her scheduled appearance. appearance. In a hurry to get to the Opry on time, because she didn't want to be late, Thaxton was speeding. He lost control of his vehicle while exiting the Opryland exit at a speed of 55 miles per hour. The exit ramp is stated to be 25. The car left the ramp and went airborne and struck the central divider. After the accident, Thaxton had a blood alcohol content of 0.08 and pled no contest to reckless endangerment and was ordered to complete an alcohol treatment program. West did not believe she was badly injured as her neighbor had been and insisted he be treated first. Officers who responded to the scene incorrectly reported she did not seem harmed at the time. West herself was under the same impression. However, she had suffered severe internal injuries and proved to have suffered both a ruptured spleen and a lacerated liver. Her spleen was removed that Friday, and the following Monday, she underwent two more surgeries to stop her liver from bleeding. Those efforts ultimately failed. Doctors said that Wes knew the extent of her injuries and even visited with Kenny Rogers shortly before her last operation. And on September the 4th, 1991, during her third operation, Wes passed away on the operating table at 58 years old. And here we go. Dottie West. Dorothy Marie Marsh West. Our country sunshine. Beautiful, isn't it? And then beloved daughter, wife, and mother. And she has a foot piece. Dorothy West right there. 32 to 91. Yeah, the grave of Dorothy West. How cool, right? Like the first country lady to win a Grammy. Like how neat is that? Like I'm glad you and I get to go to these places so we get to see like such historic or visit historic people and pay respects to the people that deserve, you know, like it's so cool. Like that, the the thing she did with Kenny Rogers was huge too. Like just all her, I mean, she was, I mean, it's Dorothy West, man. Like, or Dottie West. Like, my goodness. How cool is that? Like, I'm, I'm really glad you and I get to do this. And I'll say it in every video at the end of every video. But honestly, it does mean the world to me that you guys watch this. Thank you guys so much. Like this channel, I never would have thought that you and I were going to be able to do this like the way we do and I'm so glad we do and it's from your support it's from your views your comments it helped drive it helps to drive the algorithm to get our this channel you and I our channel into the the YouTube ether so other people watch it other people find it and then they get to join the community and we get to widen this community and do what we can do together and it is so it's so freaking cool that we get to do this man like, we get to, I never thought in a million years I would get to go visit Kenny Rogers and Dottie West. But now we've done them both within a year, or about a year and a half. Yeah, so cool, man. So, yeah, thanks for watching. Like, legit, this means the world to me. Like, I'm glad you enjoy these videos. If you've made it this far, thank you so much. I honestly can't thank you enough. Comment down below, like, what your favorite song was by Dottie and what you enjoyed or something else about her or if you have another 
If there's another grave you would like me to visit, like leave those down below because I put every one of those on file. Everything that you suggest goes into a book or it goes on that dry erase board that you've seen in some of my videos. And it's like one of these days, we're gonna to get to all of them. It's just gonna take time, but we're gonna get there. And with the world the way it is, yeah, it makes it tougher, right? Like I said in the, in the beginning, we have all this stuff to help me get there. But nonetheless, we're going to get there. Like you and I are going to get to go visit these places. And it may take a while. So we may have to go visit other things and do other things until we can get to visit those graves. Or whatever we go visit. It just may take a little bit to get there. But yeah, thanks again. And you know what? You never know what you're going to find on the back roads. Dottie West, man. How cool. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you on the next one.